today I will start discussion on instruction set architecture. As I discussed uh, earlier in the first and second lecture, instructions form the interface between hardware and software. Uh, instructions provide the primitive operations in terms of which uh, computation has to be described. And from hardware point of view, instructions are the basic behavior definitions which hardware has to implement. So, what we will do today is to take some very simple instructions, try to understand what action they perform and also where in a program they can be used to do useful things. So, uh, first of all we look at some instruction for carrying out arithmetic operations, simple ones such as addition and subtraction. Uh, then we will see how instructions are used to move data. The data is uh, required to be moved for example, between memory and registers. Then we will see how uh, decisions are made in program, so how flow of control is defined using instructions. And uh, uh, then we will take special care of how to handle constant operands. So, there are many situations where the constant operands which have to participate in computations. So, uh, these are the simple instructions which are almost used in all situations in almost all programs. So, uh, now we will have to carry the distinction between uh, assembly and machine instructions. So, we will be talking of uh, uh, the relationship between machine language and assembly language. Uh, machine language is uh, ba basically the most basic building blocks for any program and it is something which hardware can interpret. So, when you are designing an instruction set, when you are designing a new architecture, uh, you have to have certain goal. So, the goal is to uh, provide a set of operations where computation can be expressed efficiently. So, you need to maximize performance, maximize efficiency and at the same time the cost of implementing these instruction hardware should be as little as possible. Uh, also, there could be other goals as uh, power consumption and so on and uh, it should be simple so that design time is as low as possible. Now, uh, when you talk of an instruction set for the purpose of teaching, you have to always uh, start with an example. Uh, so, often uh, one takes a toy example, a toy machine and describes that, but on the other hand we will take a real machine, uh, but a, a simple one in the series which is called MIPS. This was developed by uh, people at uh, Stanford uh, in early 80s. So, this is uh, a typical architecture uh, which is come to known as risk reduced instruction set computers. Uh, we will talk more about that later, but uh, one thing which is important is that uh, uh, from 80s onwards, this these are the typical architectures which have been uh, developed. So, subsequently they, they have been all uh, developments along these lines and uh, MIPS in particular is used in uh, several applications, not all of them are general purpose computing. Example you can see here are NEC, uh, Nintendo which is uh, video games, silicon graphics computers and also Sony uh, PlayStation. So, uh, it is a real architecture and that is a plus point. Uh, we, we are not talking of a toy architecture, but it uh, at the same time it is a it is a fairly simple one to understand and uh, within short period you will get a full grasp over uh, this simple architecture. We begin with arithmetic instructions. So, the simplest arithmetic operations as we know are add and subtract and in simplest form you need to add two numbers to produce a result. So, there are three things to be specified with the instruction, which are the operands and where is the destination of the result. So, uh, suppose in uh, C you have an assignment like A is assigned B plus C, sum of B and C, then equivalently in uh, MIPS uh, assembly language we will write add, uh, here is a register name dollar s 0 
dollar s1 another register dollar s2 another register so uh, this uh, dollar is just to specify just to signify that uh, it's a register name it's a special uh, symbol s0 and uh, the association between registers like this and the variable names like abc uh, would be established by compiler so when for example compiler comes across a statement like a gets b plus c it would translate this into an add instruction and at the same time figure out uh, where is uh, b going to be sitting where is c going to be sitting and where is a going to be placed so uh, we, we have taken arbitrarily some decision that these are in s0 s1 and s2 Th these are uh, some registers of uh, mips machine now uh, one thing you would notice here is the order in which s0 s1 s2 are appearing in the instruction uh, is very significant okay Un unlike the c code where you are saying a assign b plus c uh, by these infix symbols it is very clear of uh, which are the operand where is the destination but here it is just appearing as a list so it is uh, clear by convention only that the first one is the destination and the next two are the operand so we are adding contents of uh, s1 register s2 register and putting the result in s0 register so now this is simple and in fact uh, simplicity has been one of the design goals for this architecture and uh, sim simplicity favors regularity what it means that uh, you would try to follow certain uniformity various operations for example if you take uh, subtract instruction this will also follow similar format and uh, also if you think of addition of three numbers or four numbers or five numbers uh, there are no separate instructions for doing so so uh, you have to define all those in terms of the same primitive instruction which adds two numbers uh, now the operands uh, in mips are 32 bit numbers uh, and therefore the re registers are 32 bit registers uh, question here would be that why we are limiting why, why not say that add instruction can add two numbers but they could be of arbitrary size once again uh, you you have to limit the size because working on arbitrary size would not necessarily give you the efficiency uh, if most commonly your, your numbers can fit within 32 uh, then it is good to have a limit like this and at least uh, make sure that uh, addition of 32 bit numbers is fast can be done in a single step if you want to add larger numbers then, then occasionally whenever you need that you can go through a sequence of instructions and uh, possibly spend more time but the common case can be done at a fast speed <coughs> so uh, when you have complex expressions such as uh, addition of three numbers or uh, something which involves several operations then it has to be broken down into a sequence so now look at these two statements a gets b plus c plus d and another statement which subtracts a from f which is the result of previous instruction so so this could be uh, written as a sequence where you have two additions being done uh, we are assuming here that c is value of c is present in s1 d is present in s2 the result is going to t0 which is a a, a temporary location uh, it does not correspond to anything directly in the high level language program now the uh, what did i say did i say c and d or b and c it will be b and c which will be added and then uh, t0 contains the sum of b and c and uh, d which is the third operand in the first statement is in s3 and uh, the, the result now of these two is uh, a so s0 is a seat of a and for the second instruction we have to be now careful that it is this value of a which has to be used in second instruction so you find that s0 is there as a 
second operand in the subtraction operation. So, so this is very straightforward. Uh, once you know how to do primitive operations, anything which can be done by uh, putting these together can be done in a straightforward manner. So now, uh, if if you have everything in register, what is memory for? Of course, memory is there to hold the program, but uh, memory also is used to hold bulk data, larger data structures. For example, uh, records, structures, arrays, or other complex things you you build, uh, they have to be in uh, memory, which can have much more capacity. The the number of registers is limited. In MIPS, particularly, there are 32 registers. So so basically, you can have only a few scalars which can be mapped to the MIPS registers, uh, but when you are talking of arrays then they have to be kept in memory and uh, which means that you need to have instructions to move data between memory and registers. So, that is what we will see next, uh, but before we go for that we need to see how we get data from specific locations of memory. So, memory uh, you could view as a large one dimensional array consisting of uh, bytes. Okay. So, so, this is a, again a convention that each addressable unit in the memory is considered to be a byte, whereas uh, operands I am talking of are 32 bits. So, uh, which basically means that mostly you have 32 bit operations, but sometime you may need to look at half the uh, word of 32 bits or one quarter. So, the addressability is provided at a final resolution that means, you can address each individual byte. So, each word will have 4 bytes and each byte can be each byte can be addressed. So, ad addresses are all in terms of byte addresses. Uh, <coughs> so, memory address is nothing but an index into this array and uh, uh, th this uh, specifies the byte number. So, uh, with 32 bits of address you can specify 2 raised to power 32 bytes and these are addressed from 0 to 2 raised to power 32 minus 1. If you are talking of words 32 bit words each consisting of 4 bytes uh, these will have typically addresses 0, 4, 8 and so, so on that is multiple of 4 and uh, therefore, you have total of 2 raised to power 30 words which go from 0 onwards and the last one would be 2 raise to the power 32 minus 4. Uh, what is the relationship of bytes with uh, word? There are two possibilities here. Uh, these are two different conventions which are called lit, uh, well just ignore this uh, spelling error, little endian or big endian. Uh, little endian means that within a word you start numbering bytes from uh, uh, just a minute, I think uh, uh, these these two are reverse. This is actually a big endian. You are starting numbering from the most significant side. Okay. Uh, so so on the left side, I am showing most significant bit of a word, and the right side there is least significant bit of the word. So this is uh, the big endian convention, whereas this is uh, little endian convention. So, you are starting from little end or the LSB least significant bit end. Uh, different machines follow different conventions. For example, uh, Intel processors follow little endian convention, Spark processor follows big endian convention. And uh, when you are going to work in lab with the SPIM simulator, uh, depending upon which machine you are running it on you will see different convention. So, uh, the, the simulator uh, in particular adapts the convention of the host machine. So, if you are running on uh, Pentiums you will find one convention, if you are running on CC Sun 50 in computer center you will find different convention. Okay, now, this is uh, as far as uh, when the words are aligned uh, with an address which is uh, multiple of 4. Okay, uh, but there may be also situations where words are not aligned to uh, address which is multiple of four. So this shows an example at the bottom. 
So, here we have a word beginning with this byte, this is the next byte, this is the next byte and this is the fourth byte. So, uh, this is a logical word, logically it is beginning at this point and ending at this point. Physically, uh, these bytes are grouped as shown here. So, so, physically in the memory it is one word which consists of bytes 0, 1, 2 and 3, another word which consists of bytes 4, 5, 6 and 7, but your program logically can pick up a word from uh, a byte address 1. So, what it means that you, you are looking at a word consisting of byte 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, this logical word is spread over two physical words. Okay, now, uh, let us come back to instructions which access memory, which allow data to be moved between registers and memory in either direction. So, the two instructions are load and store. So, suppose you want to pick up an element of an array, add something to that and store it back. Okay. A is an array uh, and you want eighth element. Okay. Let us assume that it is an integer array. So, here is a load instruction which is loading uh, something from memory, one word from a memory specified by this address into register T0. So, here in L w actually L stands for load, w stands for word. We are loading a word, there are instructions for load byte and so on. Let us not worry about that right now. So, the address is being specified in two parts. I am writing a number 32 and a register S3. So, at this point I am imagining that uh, register S3 holds the starting address of the array okay. and this offset or the index 8, uh, we are saying 8 elements of type integer which means that there is a byte offset of 32. So, the sum of these two numbers, one number is 32, another number which is contained in register S3, these two together get added and uh, define the address. So, a word from this address is loaded into T0 and next we perform an addition corresponding to this add. Uh, so, T0 now cont contains the data loaded from memory, uh, we are assuming that S2 contains <coughs> the value H and the result is put in uh, register T0 okay. and the next instruction writes this value T0 into address specified by this. So, this is a store instruction S w stand for store word. <coughs> the address here for store is same as load. So, basically we have put it in A 8. Suppose you were to put it in A 10, then you would change this constant. Okay. All right. Now, uh, you may be wondering what happens if it is something like A i. So, we will worry about that later, but I have described a simple situation where you can uh, have constant indices into an array. So, there, there could be other complex situations. For example, the index of the array could be a complex expression itself. So, so we will look at that later, but uh, in very simple situation we have seen how we can get data from memory, perform arithmetic, put the result back in memory. <coughs> So, now another example which uh, tries to do little more, uh, there is no arithmetic involved here, it is simply a matter of moving data. Uh, what we are trying to do is trying to <coughs> interchange two elements of an array okay. and here you will see an example of a variable index. Okay. So, it is uh, written in the form of a small function which uh, is taking an array and an index in as an argument, as two arguments. Uh, it uses a temporary variable to interchange these two. Okay. It is a standard thing you do in uh, programming for interchanging two variables or two elements of some structures, you go through a third temporary and cycle them like this. Okay. Now, this will involve basically, it is clear that you will require two loads 
where you will get these two vk and vk plus 1 and two stores where you put values back in vk and vk plus 1. So, uh, the, the first two instructions are actually preparing to get the right address. So, this is uh, another instruction uh, which I have not talked it is a multiply instruction. So, it is uh, trying to multiply uh, contents of register 5 with 4. Uh, I am using 4 as a constant here not I am not saying register 4. So, it is not dollar 4 it is 4. I will elaborate on these constant operands little later, but here just uh, uh, interpret this as a multiply instruction takes one value in 5 which is in this case uh, k okay, and uh, it is multiplied by 4. Now, this multiplication is being done because uh, k is in, uh, indexing into an integer array right and uh, for a byte offset we require 4 times that. So, what we have in register 2 as a result of this multiplication is 4 times k. Uh, that is added to uh, starting address of array v which is contained in 4 to begin with and uh, the final address is prepared in register 2. Okay. So, now you can uh, load from this memory address which is 0 offset 0 offset and uh, the, the variable part is in register 2. Okay. So, because we have done entire address calculation by these two instructions uh, the complete address is in register 0 sorry register 2 and offset is 0. So, load a word from here into register 15 the next word you pick up from uh, same address with 4 offset. So, basically you will pick up v k plus 1. Okay. So, so this is effectively loading v k in register 15 this loads second load loads v k plus 1 into register 16 and all that we are doing is now while storing we just uh, store in opposite order. Okay, that is uh, 16 is stored with 0 offset and 15 is stored with 4 offset. So, uh, the, the two get interchanged. So, essentially we have not explicitly used temporary or uh, another way of looking at this is that we have used two temporaries. Okay, we loaded both and then wrote in reverse order. Uh, ignore this for the moment this is basically uh, there because this is written as a function and this will uh, this is like a return. Okay. So, we will again talk of this later. Now, uh, all along I was talking of instructions written in symbolic form. So, basically I was writing not quite in machine language I was writing in assembly language. Uh, how do machine la machine instructions or machine language looks like? The instructions in binary form are 32 bit long. Okay. So, so again there is a uniformity the, the data is typically or most commonly 32 bit long and the instructions are also 32 bit long. Now, within an instruction we for example, if you take add instruction we need to say that uh, the operation is add operation and uh, there are 3 registers involved. Registers themselves are numbered 0 to 31 because we have total of 32 registers. So, for example, uh, registers T0, T1, etcetera are numbered 8, 9, and so on. Registers S0, S1, etcetera are numbered 16, 17, and so on. So, you might be wondering about the registers before 8 or after uh, 23, we will again talk of that later. Uh, but as we have seen in previous examples, we have been using these registers labeled as T0, T1, and so on, or sometimes we also use register directly by number. Okay register 2, register 5, register 15 and so on that is one way you can address. Other way you can have is uh, in symbolic form T0, T1, T2 or S0, S1, S2. So, now taking this uh, example add dollar T0, dollar S1, dollar S2 how do we represent this in binary form. So, a 32 bit word is divided into several fields each field specifies a different 
part of the instruction. So, uh, in this case we have 6 fields, okay. uh, this is a 6 bit field 6, 5, 5, 5, 5 and 6, the, the 2 at the end are 6 bit fields and all in the middle are 5 bit fields. The, the first field is called the opcode field or OP in short, this specifies which operation is being done, which operation the instruction is uh, asking the hardware to do. So, the code, the opcode for add is all zeros. subtract will have a different code, multiply will have a different code, divide will have a different code. So, this signifies uh, what, what the instruction is about, uh, but uh, this being only 6 bits, it will actually limit the total number of uh, instructions to, uh, it would have limited to uh, 2 raise power 6 or 64 but actually uh, a real machine requires more than that. So, a, an extension of this field is actually the last field which is called function field. Okay. So, this part the OP part will be same for a group of instructions and it is only the function field which will distinguish them. So, in fact, uh, uh, subtract instruction will also have the same pattern here uh, contrary to what I said. Uh, many of the instructions add, subtract and a few several others will have this part same and it is this part which will distinguish them. Okay. Now, out of these uh, 4 fields of 5 bits each, 3 are used for specifying 3 registers. So, uh, that is the reason why these fields are 5 bit field because registers are 5 bit numbers numbering from 0 to 31. So, in, in this particular instruction, this field is unused. Uh, what I have written as name for this is SHAMT which is short for shift amount. So, there are some shift instruction where there will be something here, but in this instruction it is all zeros. Okay. And now, these 3 register fields correspond to uh, the, the 3 registers in the instruction, but not in that order. The, the what appears first in the symbolic form is the destination and uh, that is here RD. R D stands for register destination and R S stands for register source. So, S 1 is here, okay. this is the code for S 1 uh, which you see is 17 and this is a binary code for 17. T 0 is numbered 8, so this is the binary code for 8 is 0 1 0 0 0 and uh, R T stands for register third which is this S 2. Uh, which will have as you can see from this, it will have code 18 which is 10010. So, now this string of 1s and zeros <coughs> is a 32 bit number which defines uh, this instruction. So, add T 0 S 1 S 2 is this number uh, as far as the machine is concerned. So, now uh, rather than writing uh, a long string of 1s and zeros, you can also write in compact form in hexadecimal form. Okay, going further to load and store instructions, uh, we now need to deviate from uh, the format for these two instructions. Load store in machine representation, uh, we cannot follow the same form uniform uniformly and therefore, we need to make a deviation from the idea of regularity that all instruction would be of similar nature. So, again uh, we, we need to realize that good design demands a compromise, so we cannot uh, be very rigid about this regularity. So, here is a new format which is called I format, uh, the one which I talked earlier was called R format, R stands for register, I is for immediate, immediate uh, as I will describe later is actually a term used to specify constants. So, uh, let us look at this format now, it has uh, less number of fields, basically 4 fields only, one field is 6 bits, next two are 5 bits and uh, uh, then there is a 16 bit field. So, how is an instruction like load T 0 32 dollar S 2 expressed in this format? Once again this is an off code, okay. so this dist here uh, we do not have that function field. So, it is only those 6 bits which have to be used for defining what the operation is. Uh, this is the 
RS field. So, uh, corresponds to S2 18. So, I am not writing in uh, binary now, I have just put decimal equivalents. So, uh, you have binary code of 18 lying here in this field corresponding to S2 and uh, uh, well I think this is a this should have been 8 T0 is corresponding to 8 and uh, the offset 32 is put here right. So, now uh, basically you would notice here that this constant part which is coming in load instruction has to be a number which is a 16 bit number it 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 has its own limit right uh, these were arithmetic instructions and instructions for moving data now next we go to instructions which define flow of control which allow you to take decisions uh, we have two simple instructions in mips called b n e and b e q b n e stands for branch if not equal and b e q stand for branch if equal to illustrate this let us look at look at an example of a simple if statement in c if you are saying if i compared with j if they are equal then you perform this addition h gets i plus j okay so uh, we will make this comparison although it is appearing as equality comparison what we are actually trying to do is that if they are not equal we are skipping this so that that is how we will interpret this in machine language or by, um, uh, symbolic assembly language. So, we are saying uh, if S0, S1 are not equal, then branch to a statement with this label. Okay. Uh, so, statements can have uh, or the instructions can have label uh, which are arbitrary names. So, so, this instruction is allowing you to skip the following instruction. if uh, the equality does not hold and uh, h equal to i plus j is simply add s 3, s 0, s 1. So, i and j are in uh, s 0 and s 1 and h is going into s 3. So, uh, whatever instruction follows here will be uh, tagged with this label. So, this label is linked to that branch statement. Okay. Uh, now, apart from conditional branches which are testing condition, we also have unconditional branch uh, which is even simpler j is the instruction uh, symbol j stands for jump and uh, a label. So, we are not specifying any operand for comparison here you simply say unconditionally jump. We, we need this uh, in a in a situation for example, in if then else. So, if you are saying if i not equal to j you do this else you do that. Okay. So, here uh, uh, if this condition does not hold we are checking it with b e q if uh, 4 and 5 register s 4 and s 5 are not equal then we will do this if they are equal we are branching to label l a b 1. Okay. Uh, l a b 1 is tagged with this instruction subtract which is subtracting s 5 from s 4 putting the result in s 3 and this instruction uh, subtracts s 5 from s 4 puts the result this adds s 5 to s 4 puts the result in s 3. So, after this instruction addition we do not want to do subtract. Okay. So, to skip this we need an unconditional jump here jump to lab to this label is uh, label of the instruction after subtract. Okay. So, the after this instruction the control flows either like this to lab lab 1 and then to lab 2 or goes to add and then jumps to lab 2. So, lab 2 is a common point which would be in a C language statement after this here uh, we are either doing this or doing this. So, so this uh, flow of control is organized by one uh, branch which is conditional and one jump which is unconditional. Now, uh, I talked so far about 
comparison for equality, equality or inequality, but you often need to do a less than or greater than type of comparison. How do we carry that out? For that there is an instruction called SLT which stands for set if less than, okay. SLT stands for set if less than. So, you, you set a register to value 1 or 0 depending upon comparison. So, this uh, instruction for example, SLT dollar T0 dollar S1 dollar S2 has T0 as the destination where you will set a value to 0 or 1 and it compares S1 and S2. So, if S1 is less than S2, then you set T0 to 1, otherwise you set uh, T0 to 0. So, its equivalent definition is this. Okay if S 1 less than S 2 then T 0 equal to 1 else T 0 equal to 0 all right. Now, th this is uh, not a branch instruction, I it does comparison, uh, but the, the result is available in a register. So, it does not alter the flow of control, you need to combine this with B E Q or B N E to achieve uh, an effect of something like let us say B L T. Suppose, you want to say branch if less than branch if less than S 1, S 2 to certain label. Okay. Uh, in the same spirit as B E Q, we said compare two register for equality and branch if the condition holds. So, suppose uh, comparison is less than and we want to branch, you will have to combine a comparison like this and then uh, combine this with a branch instruction of B E Q or B N E type. So, basically you will make compare, make comparison result is in uh, a register, then you check if the register is equal to 0 or 1. Okay. So, uh, we, we will probably discuss that in a tutorial how to do that. <coughs> now, uh, after having introduced this uh, jump instruction, let us look at formats of all the instructions we have uh, introduced for uh, decision making and flow of control. So, B and E and B E Q follow the I format. Uh, there is an opcode, two register which you specify and a 16 bit number which defines the label. Okay. The purpose of this 16 bit field is different here. In load store it was an offset uh, in the address from where you are to pick the data. Here again in some sense you are trying to define an address, but address for instruction. Okay. So, in, in assembly form, in symbolic form. Uh, we have written a label, but eventually it actually has to be an address. So, the, the number which appears here is essentially an offset uh, of the destination address from the current instruction. I uh, will elaborate on the exact meaning of this later, uh, but just remember that this is an offset which you are specifying to define the destination where jump has to be carried out. In the, in the jump instruction, there is nothing else except for opcode and uh, remaining 26 bits are for specifying uh, the jump address. SLT instruction on the other hand goes back to R format, where you have uh, opcode, three register fields, shift amount field and function field. Okay. Once again, shift amount is not being used, OP and function together define SLT instruction and there are three register fields. Okay. Now, finally, let us move to handling of constants. So, you, you have a lot of cases when uh, you have to deal with constants in your computation. So, for example, if you say A gets A plus 5, B gets B plus 1 or C gets C minus 18, how do we do these things? Uh, there are various ways it can be done and different processors follow different approach. You can have these constants put as some data in the memory and uh, when a program is loaded in the memory, this constant data could also be initialized that could also be loaded. The other approach is uh, that you can put the constants as part of the instructions. So, both possibilities exist in MIPS and we will look at the later one at the moment. Here I am putting same instructions, uh, but one of the operands and it is the last one is uh, written as a constant instead of a register number. And to distinguish it from normal add, 
if there is a suffix i which stands for add immediate. Now, the, the, the reason why we call it immediate is that the operand is immediately available in the instruction itself. It does not have to be brought from a register or from memory location. So, that is the sense in which the term immediate is used. So, you have add immediate, you have SLT immediate and the instructions and and or for logical operation which I have not described, but the meaning is obvious and immediate or immediate and so on. And these instructions also follow I format, this is an opcode, two registers are being specified and uh, we have 16 bits for a constant. So, so although we deviated from R format uh, to get these constant, but you notice that in most of these constants are 16 bit numbers. What if uh, you use, you need a larger constant, we will come to that, but uh, there is a special constant 0 which is uh, hardwired into register 0. So, register 0 in uh, among registers 0 to 31 is a special register whose contents remain 0. So, you, you cannot alter it by a program. So, suppose you write an add instruction with register 0 as a destination. Uh, so, so, add instruction will just leave it unchanged, it will not do, it will perform add operation, but the result will be thrown away. So, uh, for example, if you say add, if you are using 0 as a source or as an operand, if you say add S2, S4, 0, uh, it means you are simply moving data from this to this. Okay. So, so there is no separate move instruction, uh, add instruction can be equally well used for moving by virtue of this constant 0. So, it can be written as uh, dollar $0 or dollar $0 ZERO. Okay, now, coming back to the large constants which cannot be contained within 16 bits. So, we should be able to work with 32 bit constants if need be. Uh, now, since instructions deal with 16 bit constant at a time, uh, one, one could have designed for larger one also, one could go for uh, 18, 20, 22 and so on. Some, some processors do that, but you, you cannot do, you, you cannot have a single instruction handling 32 bit constant, because where will be opcode. Okay. Uh, you have total 32 bits and you cannot uh, devote all the bits for one operand. So, we, we try to do this with two instructions, one instruction fills in the left half, left 16, another instruction fills in the right half for the right 16 bits and uh, we do it by using a special instruction called LUI which stands for load upper immediate. Okay. L u i, upper means it loads upper part of a register, left half of a register and i because it is having a constant. So, L u i dollar t 0 and this constant which is 16 bit constant, this instruction will bring this constant into upper half or the left half of a register uh, t 0 in this case. Then we bring in another instruction o r i or immediate. Uh, same register and another constant which corresponds to the lower half. So, now uh, this instruction will or the contents of register T 0 and this constant put the result in T 0. So, what what is happening is shown here. After the first instruction is executed, register T 0 has that constant in the left half, the right half is all zeros. <coughs> The second instruction is taking this constant uh, and uh, this is in the right half, left half is 0, the two are odd which means the two are actually put together in this form and uh, this sequence is able to load a constant whose first part is this, second part is that. <coughs> okay. So, now uh, the idea here is that if you have a small constant, you can work with single instruction, which will be the most common case. But uh, as in when you need uh, larger constant, you can uh, spend more time, you can use two instructions and uh, do the job. So, to end, let me summarize all the instructions we have learnt and uh, what is the format used for their binary or machine representation. <coughs> we have arithmetic instructions 
in two flavors uh, with register operand and with constant operands. So, one operand of course, is register here also add and subtract, add immediate and subtract immediate, add and subtract follow R format, add immediate subtract immediate follow I format. Okay. Then we have logical instruction AND and OR and their immediate counterpart. Once again the formats are R for AND OR, I for AND immediate or immediate. SLT also has an immediate version. Okay. Uh, the formats are R and I. Uh, BEQ and BNE are two branch instructions which we have uh, discussed. The format is I. J is unconditional branch instruction called jump. The format is J. So, th that is the only odd man out here. Load word, store word also form uh, I format. LUI load upper immediate is also I format. So, so, these are the instructions we have learned. There is a little bit you can do with these. You would often need more instructions which we will see in the next class. If you have any questions, I can take up now. Uh, okay, question is what is full form of BNE? BNE is branch if not equal, BEQ is branch if equal. Yes. Hmm. Okay, this is from hardware point of view. If uh, you are working with the less number of registers, smaller in size, of you adding smaller numbers, the circuitry which can do that is faster. <coughs> okay, the the hardware <coughs> for adding two thirty two bit numbers is faster than hardware for adding two sixty four bit numbers. Why it is so? We will see later in the course. <coughs> yes, please. Okay, uh, swap instruction, swap operation. <coughs> yeah, uh, for swap, basically uh, the the key part is here. These two load instruction, these two store instructions. <coughs> So, we are reading two words from memory v k and v k plus 1 into two registers 15 and 16 and writing in the opposite order. Okay, so, they get swapped. <coughs> what remains is uh, preparing the addresses of memory from where you are going to read. So, before that we actually saw very simple case where the index of the array is a constant. Okay. That constant can be placed here. Okay, in in the I format, this goes in that 16 bit field, and uh, a, a register which contains the starting address of A. Okay, A is an array uh, where compiler would put this somewhere in the memory. Okay, the starting address is uh, we are assuming that before this somewhere, we have ensured that the starting address is in S3. Similarly, here <coughs> we uh, are assuming that the starting address of array V is in register 4 and the index k is in register 5. So, now uh, as, as far as integers are concerned they occupy one word, but our addressing is byte. So, we want to take starting address of v and add 4 times k to that. So, first multiply instruction is actually preparing 4 times k. This contains 5 or uh, this contains uh, value of k multiplied by 4 that gets into 2. So, register 2 and 4 are added to again bring them to 2 and that is being used as address here. So, for v k uh, 2 has complete address you need 0 offset for v k plus 1 you need additional 4 offset because uh, v k plus 1 means it is 4 bytes ahead after v k is it clear okay. any other question. Okay. So, uh, OR instruction basically takes two 32 bit words uh, and performs OR operation bit by bit. Okay. Here we are using OR I that is immediate form of OR. It takes one register and one constant. Okay. The constant we are specifying is only 16 bits, 
but actual operation which is performed is a 32 bit operation. So, the, the remaining 16 positions are filled with zeros. So, so when or operation is being done, we are taking this this number, first number is contained in T0, second number is obtained by prefixing 16 zeros to this constant which is part of the instruction and the instruction or Z2. This is the result which will go to T0 again which is the destination register here. Okay. Uh, so, so, this is the way we have used to put two parts of a large constant together to form a 32 bit constant in a register. Any other question? Okay, we stop at this. Thank you.